Psalm 37 verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Can you put your name there? Put your name there. Say the steps of Adams. Call your name one to go. Are ordered by who? Are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his ways. You wake up in the morning, you say, hey, I'm traveling to Joburg. The Lord say, no, don't go. This is how you are ordered. You see the word ordered there. The step of a good man are ordered. He didn't say the step of a good man are conveniently pleased, led by God. No, God will order you. The word order there is a military term. You wake up and you are about to go accept a job. Say, no, don't take it. And you are willing to say yes to your will, Lord. Amen, somebody. You've gotten yourself a visa. You have made up your mind. You are relocated to some country somewhere. And you've packed all your luggages. The day you're about to go, a voice just came and said, You are not going. Are you going to obey him? Or you are going to consider what you stand to lose? Hey, look at the ticket. Look at this. Look at that. And many have gone like that out of disobedience. And they have died prematurely. Because where he is not, he is not committed to keep you. He is everywhere, by the way. But wherever he has not asked you to go, he's not committed to keep you. Only when he's the one guiding and leading you. When you go to God in prayer, there are questions you need to ask God. Question number one, write them down. When you go to God for prayer and you are asking God to guide you and to lead you, what do you ask him? Question number one, what? The question what is asking God, what are you calling me to do? What are you asking me to do? If you come to me and say, Pastor, the Lord is asking me to go to business. The first thing I will ask you, what kind of business is God asking you to go into? If you have not gotten the idea yet, go back and pray. God will not ask you to do something without telling you what to do. Amen, somebody. If you say God is calling you into ministry, what kind of ministry is God calling you into? Because ministries are, are different. The Bible talks about five offices of the Holy Spirit. The Bible talks about nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Is it calling you as an apostle, as a prophet, as an evangelist, as a pastor, or as a teacher? And each of these five people operate in different ways. The teacher does not operate as the pastor. There are ministries called power ministry, which we are one of those people called by God. Power ministry is a ministry that addresses people's issues of sickness, of pain, based on the leading of the Holy Spirit. So, lay people do not understand. You must identify the areas what God wants you to do. So, number one question is what? Am I a businessman? What kind of business? Am I a teacher? Lord, what? Number two, second question is where? Where deals with the question of location? Location, place, or town? Number one, you ask God what? Number two, it's not enough to know what to do. You need to ask God, where can I do it? Amen, somebody. If, for instance, God is asking you to go into farming here, yeah, where does he want you to do the farming? You need to pray. If God wants you to open a shop, where does he want you to open the shop? It's not necessary that because God says open a shop, you must go to town. Here you say, no, town, there are many people in town. If I open my shop by town, you will be shocked. You might go to town, everybody walk in front of your shop and not one person ever comes in. But when you ask God where and God tells you the location, you might even be somewhere out of town and everybody will be leaving town to come to your own shop because God has guided you there. The Bible says where the carcass is. It said, there the eagles will gather. Wherever God leads you to. I've said it before. I said, where God send you is where God will do what? Sell you. God will only sell you and that which he has put in you in the place where he has sent you to. That's why we have a lot of our brethren, Africans, who are suffering in America, suffering in, in Europe. Others went there for greener pasture. They got it. Because somehow God led them there. They went and they are suffering. But we have others who are back at home, as, as poor as God the world, say those areas are. And yet they are multi-millionaires. They are billionaires. Why? 
because they are guided by God. Brethren, I pray from today. May God show you what. May God show you where. Receive it in the name of Jesus. So when members come to me and say, Oh, pastor, the Lord has spoken to me. I, I should, I, the first question I ask them, Have you prayed? Does God want you to relocate to Jobek or to Cape Town? Have you prayed? My concern is not that you shouldn't go. My concern is that you are guided. And once they come and say, I am convinced, praise God, praise God. Bless you, go. So that if you go and anything happen, you hold yourself right because you say God told you. May you not be confused again about God's leading for your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three question. When? Number one is what? Number two is what? Number three is what? When? When talks about timing. Timing is very important to the fulfillment of vision. Amen, somebody. It's possible that God has showed you what to do now. But he does not want you to do it now. I have preached a message some time ago called premature exposure. If you expose yourself before time, the danger for you to die is there. And for that thing you are doing to die. God might want you to go into politics. God might want you to go into ministry. God might want you to go into business. But is it time? He could tell you, yes, it is this year. But which month and when? You need to find out. That's why the Bible says, even if the vision tarries, what did he say you should do? He said, wait. Why do you have to wait? Because the time has not come. Remember what Jesus told his mother in the book of John chapter 2. When the mother called him in, in, the, in the wedding of Cana Galilee. He said, oh, come and turn water to wine. He said, woman, why trouble me before my time? Hey! Jesus was saying to the mother Mary. He said, my time has not come. But because it was his mother, protocol was broken. And that was the first miracle Jesus performed. He performed that miracle before his time to manifest. Do you know that everybody has a time to manifest? And I'm hearing the Lord saying to me, 100 people here, this is your season for manifestation. Hey, if you stand up and say that, amen with joy, 100 of you, this is your season for manifestation. Hey, if you say it with excitement, this is your season for manifestation. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's my time. It's your time. These answers will sort out the pain of looking for all these things. Number four. The last question. The last question you ask is how. Somebody say how. How is God give me a pattern? How do I go about it? What and what am I required to do? How am I supposed to do it? God has a pattern for everyone. And when you follow God's pattern, you will never be misled. I hear the Lord now say to me, say this. Say, my father, my God. I refuse confusion for my business, for my career, for my children. Clap your hands and reject confusion. Open your mouth and pray.